On October 13th, 2014, Jagex released the Iron Man game mode in old school RuneScape. For years, we've waited for the day when we could finally play Iron Man as a group. Finally, Group Iron Man is here. With the help of some friends, we plan on tackling the infamous collection log. The goal is simple. Gather one of each rare, clue, and boss reward RuneScape has to offer. As always, this shit will take a long ass time, but we're always down for a grind. I'm Matt Lighty, and this is The Stockpile. Either way, the melee hits way fucking harder. <laughs> yeah. So I'd prefer to pray against the poltergeist. Uh, what are we on? Poltergeist. Uh, no. 302. It edges out by like 30 ish. On all like melee magic. styles. I have uh, extra food as well after this kill if you need it. Sure. He's fooding. You are food. Waiting to SGS specs. I haven't taken damage yet. What the fuck did you just do? You just telegraphed those pants. <laughs> Look, man, though, we gotta get to waste. Oh my god. Lady, is there more wheels or doors in the world? <laughs> oh my god. Wheels. Weird. Yeah, but think about Why hotels. Why do you ask this? <laughs> but it also depends if you mean, you know, metaphysical doors. That's a drop? A drop! Wait. Huh? Dragon you two dagger? Two, literally oh. have what? never seen or heard of that drop before. No fucking way. He drops that? Let's go scooch on by. Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, a frozen cash. Cool. Thanks, Santa. All right, so I'm doing a little bit more construction. I need to get uh, two more construction levels. I'm currently at 82. I want to get to 84 so I can reach two specific things. The first thing is the Crystalline Nexus Portal. So you could boost this at 84. This just lets me get all of my teleport slots instead of, like, the seven I have. Now it gets to, like... Oh, 20 something or whatever so this will allow me to fill out my uh teleport nexus with every single teleport possible and the other thing is the ornate jewelry box which requires 83 which obviously i'll get on the way to 84 this gives me the ring of wealth teleports and the amulet of glory teleports which i also want to get because those teleports are quite convenient so i gotta sit here for a little bit and uh cast um make plank until i uh yeah until i have all the planks i need so it's nothing much more than sitting here doing just this and then i just wait till it's done which takes um i don't know like a couple minutes two three minutes i don't know how many uh things i need to do we could find out i think um con calc osrs so currently i'm level 82 just type in my name is it this or is it the underscore thing i think it's the underscore thing no we're good this is it um and then my target level is 84 and i'm going to be making a mahogany table which is this so i need to make is it really only 596 Oh, well, that's the number of tables I need to make, which is six planks per table. Okay, so we could do some, we'll just say 600 times six, 3,600 planks is what I need. Okay, I mean, that's annoying. You yeah, know, that's, that's what it is. All right, I've begun making my tables. I have 3,200 planks in the bank to go, and it'll take... You know, three, four hours to make all the tables I need to make. So this should be done sometime today. Okay, so about five and a half hours on and off later. I had, I ran out of mahogany. I guess I just miscounted. I used all my mahogany planks, 3,200. Used whatever teak planks I had, a couple hundred. And I'm just finishing off on oak right now. There's a lady four. That's the last level I needed. So I need to do 
two different boosts. This is not going to be the easiest thing in the shed. Upgrading here requires uh, two gold leaf, eight glories, and eight rings of wealth. Weird. Okay, so let's prepare that. Then we'll look at the... Well, actually, I need two gold leaf. And then, what do I need here? Four gold leaf, two magic stones. Yikes. Okay, so four gold... Let's go get four gold leaf and two magic stones first. Then we'll... I'll recoup when I have all my stuff. Yay, I have all of my components. I don't know how many orange spices I have. Okay, a couple. Not, not many. So if I do this the first try, that would be... You know, ideal. If I get a plus four, I can upgrade that. If I get a plus five, I can do this upgrade. Um, if we look at this, it says, "Ooh, I'm, see, this is a good thing. I clicked that. I'm not in building mode right now. I would have been a very cranky if I fucking got that in the wrong mode." Upgrade. I have my stuff, just not the level. And this should say the same thing. I have my stuff, just not the level. Okay, plus five first try construction didn't even get hit love it try again one two drop can't drop things in building mode okay i have to leave drop things and come back inside it's gonna be very annoying for my uh inventory all right and plus two construction nope okay let's bank and reset yes, this is just gonna be an annoying process there's really no way around this unfortunately this is the last one i got after this i'm gonna have to go do more cat spice fun time in evil dave's creepy basement minus five same odds fantastic okay off we go to cat land to uh get more spices i guess okay i farmed out like um 10 more, 10 more spice. First try, mm, nothing. Cool. So fucking cramped. Whoop, plus five, plus five, plus five alert. There's one down. Going, we're going, we're going. Boom. Oh, right. Look at that. All right. So we have our ornate box, which means we get miscellanea, Grand Exchange, Faldor Park. Don't even know where the fuck Don DeCan's Rock is. Edgeville, Crom, Jadre... This doesn't really matter. I have a mountain over there, but there's the Ring of Wealth. But teleports what I wanted. And over here, we have the Crystalline Portal Nexus. We could do all of the things. I just have to now bring literally all of these runes. So this is going to take a while, but the hard part's done. So I'm, I'm almost done with my portal purchasing, but I seem to have... Missed out a key component here. One of the teleports needs a thousand bananas. So I have to trade to this man who happens to sell. Uh, most... Oh, God, they're not noted. Oh, my God. How badly do I want this? This bank work right here? All right, hold on. Oh, Okay. This is going to be a minute. I got to buy a thousand bananas from this fucker. 25 per inventory. I'll be back. Okay, that took... Um, well, too long. That's how long it took. Maybe like 20 minutes. But that, you know, too too long, realistically. But that should be the end of the end of it all. Let's go... Oh, I'm a monkey. I forgot. Uh, Unmonkify. Thank you. Let's uh, head back to my casa and uh check in i end up having to spend in total you know an amount of whatever runes but like 30 uh, i think it was thirty-five thousand laws to finish this up but harmony island in requires nature's apatol 1000 banana bullshits save and close portal nexus totally fucking maxed now so now i have also the plug-in by the way this is fun um teleport better teleport menu which applies this and teleport maps that applies it to my dig site so when i click on dig site well when i'm at the dig site it shows the mushroom patterns so say if i went to like lithgren for example right uh well, that was a bad example uh okay forget the lithgren thing if i go to the mushroom networks it, it brings up the menus and then if the same thing if i go to the spirit trees it brings up this kind of menu and now i have it so 
uh, oh, I'm at a spirit tree. That was a whoopsies. If I go to the teleport nexus and I go to the op, my whatever I want to teleport to, it now has like regions. So I know where to go. So I won't like misclick the wieldy. Say I want to go to like Mistalin, right? I could see the Varrock, Grand Exchange, Trainer Manor, Lumbee. So I know exactly where I want to go. I could toggle this on and off if I just want to. But yeah, there's tons of options for teleports. I have a, I have them all now. I'm the teleport king. So now I could do all my fun things easily uh, whenever I want to. Jesus Christ. I never got a Guardian Drake before. I'm trying to like flinch his attacks now. I don't have enough life to take a melee hit here. He'll do zero damage at ranged. I just have to attack when he attacks. And we're fine. That was uh, vicious, those melee hits. That's the only reason I do drakes is because they could spawn guardian drakes, but they are vicious little fuckers if they actually get a hold of you. I was currently tabbed out doing drakes, and I just heard this on the second monitor. So hopefully I'm rewarded with a sweet, sweet imbued heart. <laughs> That'd be insane, actually. Nope. No, just some garbage. That's okay. I do have to bank after this kill now. The fucking Guardian Drake almost wrecked me. Another Guardian Drake. I'm a lucky little boy. Just gotta um, manage my attacking, etc. Only attack when he attacks. And then uh, don't take any melee damage. It's pretty simple. They do have a lot of life, but with Pideon and the Dragonlance, they get, like, shredded. Alright. We got our imbued heart. Fingers crossed. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. So I have a blue dragon task, which I started to do brutal blue dragons for. Um, let me show that off, because it's like a brutal blue dragon. All right, so I started killing these with range. Kind of have to range, but otherwise you take damage, because they do like triple attacks. But if you pray mage and have anti-fire, they do nothing. Problem was, me killing these things with range was not even like it was... Maybe a minute to a minute and a half per dragon. Like, it was slow. Slow enough. Because their brutal blue dragons are harder, right? My range isn't immaculate. Now, I was killing them because versus regular shit blue dragons because they have... They could drop a visage. But I was like, you know, what's the point of doing that when I can kill Vorkath in a minute and a half consistently with melee? Because the, the, the chance of getting a unique drop off of Vorkath Meaning one of these five things is about one in 650 to get, you know, a drop off of Warcath on average. Um, you know, way better chances of getting a Visage as well. So it's like, what what the fuck, you know? Also, I did just complete the Speed Vorkath Chaser. My PB is a... I don't know if command even works. PB Vorkath. Does this do anything? Yeah, 114. So 115 was the thing, so... You know, that was uh, pretty close. But again, there's no point to kill Vorkath on Slayer Task. You don't use the Slayer Helm. Um, it's just kind of like I use it as an excuse to kill Vorkath and to progress the task. Because since you use a Salve E, which is 20% increased accuracy and damage against zombies and stuff like that. He's a zombie. This is better than the Slayer Helmet. Then I can wear the Serpentine Visage. Then I don't get Venomed. It's just kind of like, what the fuck is the point? So, yeah, he just has an excuse to kill Vorkath. So I've got a task now of uh, like 110 more blue dragons or something. Um, so I'm just going to do the entire task over the next week and, week and change on Vorkath. And uh, the kills are pretty quick. The chance of dying is ever looming because I do Vorkath with the walking method still. Which just means if I make a mistake or I fall out of rhythm, the chance of dying is very real. Um, I don't know if I've shown a Vorkath full kill in a while, so I'll kind of just do that real quick. Um, but yeah, I start with Warhammer. And then uh, normally if one of those hits, we're good to go. Then I just start poking. And uh, yeah, and then, and then if, when, if he does the white thing, I swap to my Slayer Staff, which auto-cast Crumble and Dead. And I do that. If he does the acid spit, so there's the white thing, crumble and dead, boom. And then I gotta wait for um, it to stop moving, and then I can click. Yeah, then as the fire happens, you move two tiles. Not a whole lot going on here. With the dragon lance, this is why I like was so in love with getting this and sat at Hydra for so long. Oh, that's gonna hit me. Um, it's because you know this thing fucking collapsed like um, at dragons in general. So. 
Now we're going to try to do the walking thing here. One, two. So the way it works is you watch your little blue true tile. I get hit here. And then um, uh, the second you hit, you walk back. And then once you go to the second row of mark tiles, which is the third tile black, you click, you click again. And that's how you basically get an attack in, but don't get hit. It sounds more complicated than it is. But you're basically attacking here, watching your tile go one, two. When you click here, you click back on and click back forward. And you go back and forth. Just a rhythm. Once you get in the rhythm, you're good to go. Um, if I actually get my prayer up a little bit more and I, I have a little bit more stringent with my prayer usage and like I do things like turn it off for this part, um, I could probably do this task without actually even uh, drinking any prayer pots, assuming the kill goes well. I have like a minute and change on my kills. And typically I can kill him in two to three special rotations. So he does like uh, either two acids or two... Um, you know, little white nuggets. Oops, we gotta get an extra phase here. And that's that. All right. But uh, yeah, so that's like the that's the entire Vorkath kill, and then we just hope to get loot. But the the generic drops from Vorkath are great. The superior dragon bones, best thing in the game for prayer experience. Full stop. Uh, let me show you actually what I do. It's a little annoying what I'm about to do, but let me show you what I do with my superior dragon bones because it is kind of important. Something I should be doing daily that I currently don't but I should be doing it daily. Okay, so I have the Mauritania hards done uh, when I put on my Mauritania legs. And I every day, every single day, I could be doing this where I claim the slime from Robin over here. And uh, what this does is it does the annoying part of the ectofuncus training over here for me. It pre-grinds my bones. So basically you bring 14 bones and you go over there and talk to Robin and you just click worship the ectofuncus. And it starts to give you 600 prayer experience per one of these pots. And if you click once, um, it just does one. So you have to just sit here and spam click. This also gives you Ecto tokens, which is used to charge the Bone Crusher, but it gives you like an absurd amount. Um, you can drop these on your way to the bank. So you have to do this twice a day. If you have your elites, I think it's four times a day you effectively get to do this, which is like a lot uh so it's not four i guess it's like four and a three and a half times a day 39 pots yeah three inventories worth but i have like a bajillion bones here right so you know i could just do this at least twice a day and i'm pretty much happy or you know twice inventory so if you do this like every day it's what like 26 or something times 600 so it's like 15,000 prayer experience a day right um you know i could do that every day if i was really diligent about it and it would give me like an absurd amount of experience and i would just be at like 99 prayer within like i don't know well i guess we could do the math on that too let's just say 11 million one two three okay divided by we'll say sixteen thousand. it would be two years two years to get to 99 prayer using daily ectofuncus now is that viable i mean i guess legally mentally is that viable uh, probably not. Anywho, quick little Vorkath aside with the bone meal thing. So when I finish my Vorkath kill, I hit my well, I run down to my newly maxed portal nexus, and I just go to Lunar Isle, and that's where I could bank again if I need to. Otherwise, you just talk to the uh, banks on the left, which are the Fremenic people, not the uh, pirate guy, and they kick you off to here, which is perfect because you want to go right here. And then rinse, repeat, Vorkath. It's a pretty simple process. Kills take about two minutes. Reset takes about one minute. So three minute per loop. And uh, yeah, you just get tremendous, uh, tremendous loot. Oh, you got a Christmas hat on. Vorkath's got a Christmas hat. You're not streaming. I can't see it's Christmas. Oh, shit. You almost killed me doing this. What the fuck? See it now? Yeah. So he did that ability four times in a row as you asked me to turn stream on. <laughs> Six times, that means now, because that's just two more. Oh, I heard about this diagonal shit. Let me see if this works here. I click diagonally, and then click. Oh my god, maybe. Oh. That two diagonal back is always empty from you. Ooh. Could be just lies, could be memes, who knows. Worked out at the exact moment. Stuck in the middle with you. After finishing up uh, my Vorkath and Blue Dragons, I continued on to Gargoyles, and I unfortunately... This task is almost done. I forgot myself my uh, 
my runes. I had my runes pouch set up for Vorkath, which is... I basically used Chaos instead of Nature's in my four rune setup. So I'm at Gargoyles without fucking High Elks, and then my inventory is just flooded with garbage. Truly, uh, you know, a first world problem. We got a, a Black Dragon task after we've extended Black Dragons. So 41, we're gonna go do the entire task at King Black Dragon. Thankfully, Zen snagged another uh, Fury or Blood Shard drop off of Thieving when he was AFK, which means we get two shards. So I pop it in the Blood Fury so we can get it at a KBD and try our, at least, you know, try our best luck at uh, doing KBD because it still is like our number one rate for getting a Visage. Um, so if we take a look at the Visage rate, KBD as the one in 5,000 is tied with Vorkath being the best. So not great, but I also still need the uh, the helmet. I don't have the KBD heads. So if I get the heads, I'll probably maybe chill out on KBD a little bit just because that's the next Slayer helmet in my repertoire of Slayer helmets to make. But yeah, it's still things still worth doing for sure. This is my base setup. Um, I use this setup because when, you know, as I'm just walking to KBD, that's like the only risk. And then when I'm protecting, I, I lose nothing. I don't risk anything. I mean, no barrows, gloves, and dragon boots, but nothing of actual value. So it's safe and it's uh, pretty comfy. Oh, okay. There's the KBD heads. So I could... I guess I could kind of chill on doing KBD now. Um, nice full count, or 18 per that trip. And that was with the shark drop, so probably averaging about 15. So we'll do uh, two more trips of the same setup, and it should be pretty easy to complete. So, yeah, but we did get the dragon, the KBD heads, which, you know, that gets us the... Uh, you could also you could mount it on the wall if you wanted to to have a mounted one. Um, it's also used to make the dragon hunter crossbow black. We're gonna be using it for the uh, black slayer helmet as one of our slayer helmets to get. So at this point, we're only missing oh, a couple more. We're, there's not that many um, left now. We have the piece for Skatizo. We now have the black piece. So we're just missing, and we have this one, we're just missing the green and the red from Calphite Queen and then Abyssal Demons or, or Slash Sire. So, progress. All right, just shy of getting able to do this in two trips, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, we're actually going to be a little behind on completing it in the the way I wanted. I, we, if I You know, if I had a Dragonfire Shield, I could definitely do... 25 kills a trip, but with the little anti-shield, it's just too weak defensively. Okay. King Black Dragon task complete. Um, you know, we didn't get... <laughs> we didn't get a visage, but at least we got the helm um, piece. And then we could now at least pop on our Slayer Cape. Go for the 10% back-to-back. I wouldn't mind doing more KBD. It's a pretty relaxing task. There's only a minor asshole clenching moment which is when you teleport with the uh, burning amulet to the lava maze right outside kbd you're legally in level 40 something wildy but that's a very short-lived part of it and back to back nope water fiends which is like the one task i actually skip i don't uh actually even think there's enough block space to no it's like it's so bad water fiends that you just skip it but it's also weighted so low it's like the lowest way to task that's not worth blocking statistically so you know we just skip it off to steel dragons i go my current slayer task is calphite queen as a boss task i took uh 55 which is my max always i just take the max and um my process for this hasn't really changed in a really long time i just melee it though that's the only real difference i guess i do one hit go under and then second hit with a Warhammer. Um, it's pretty chill overall. I normally eat like, I don't know, 5 to 10 food. Depending on how the kill goes. Sometimes I just get fucking slammed. But uh, yeah, it's really easy. Um, I really want to get that Karis of Breaching. The blue one that lets me have like triple accuracy. Because it'll make my method for doing this so much nicer. Um, 
The other little thing is you just gotta make sure you eat when you go underneath Caliphate Queen. As long as you do that, you're chilling. And it's just pretty it's pretty easy since the uh the hammer spec transitions between phases. So if you lower the defense on phase one, it's the same for phase two. But uh it's just a lot cleaner if you have, you know, that uh that Karis. And sometimes I have to use a prayer pot, sometimes I don't. I typically use a super combat every three kills. This is like the third kill of super combating. Um, but like you can see there's 45 seconds on the clock and like depending on just how I hit this, this, this phase can either be a sip or no sip kill. Never, I never did a two sip kill. Always one. I do use blood fury. It seems to mitigate it better. And I do also use berserker. Some people like to use suffering. You could use suffering. This is going to be a, a one sip kill cause I'm just not hitting very well. That's okay too. Um, he, she is says says protect from melee but doesn't mean you can't hit her it just means she has very high melee defenses that's where the karis kind of ignores that but even the regular karis with slayer helm on task with my stats it just kind of you still hit so not a big deal i'm really only here for the helmet um or the head you need one for the diary one for the helmet so i'd like to get two you get a guaranteed one at 256 and then it's one in 128 up to that i'm actually really close to 128 kc so I'm kind of due for a Calphite Queen head. Um, but her drops, aside from that, Dragon Pick is like the main one, I guess. Um, I just TP out to Carol. So 116 KC. I normally don't even like, I'll just grab another Stam and then I'll just head back out. Maybe pick up, fill the inventory with food. And then it's just hide out and TP there. And then I'm chilling. Um, it's pretty it's pretty relaxing though. I, I don't mind doing Calphite Queen. It's, you know, people complain about it. But the complaint that is merited, I think, twofold. One, um, no matter what your def defenses are, no matter your gear, she's just going to fucking mollywop you. She hits through everything, seemingly. So, like, you pray mage, she hits range. You pray range, she hits mage. It doesn't really matter. And then, um, if you don't have the Desert Elites, which ironically requires the Calphite Queen head to do. So, even if I had the stats, it's kind of a moot point. Because you'd still need the head to get the head. That gets you this shortcut right there. Otherwise, you have to go all the way around. That sucks. This should just be a hard diary. I don't know why it isn't. But, yeah. It's um, Desert Elite. So, rewards. Um, where is it? Access to crevice shortcut requiring 86 agility in the Caliphate layer. Yada, yada, yada. So, that'd be, that'd be the one you want. But, again, you need the head to get this. Not even to mention 86 agility. So, I'd be 81 with a boost. Um, but I would never, you never, I don't think you'd pie this. I mean, you could. It'd drive, it'd drive you a little bit insane. My agility's 77, as we all know. I only do agility from lamps, really. Um, but maybe one day we'll get up there. It's, I just don't like it at all. Agility's like my least favorite thing in the universe. So <laughs> I don't want to touch that with a fucking 10 foot pole. But either way, Karis makes me want to go back to TOA. Even just doing entries and get that, get that Karis, you know, because I really would love it for doing Calphite Queen. Um, nice, nice hit. The kills that do get a Warhammer spec go a lot better. And obviously, there's that chance you can crack the crack the Chitin, um for that those big up to like 150 hits you sometimes see. Those are the the big bangers. But aside from that, you're just fucking chugging food, slapping a bug. And that's the uh, that's the gist of the kill. You just hit like, <clears throat> you can just hit 50s with this thing on task pretty comfortably. And that's, you know, a fifth of its life per phase. So it's uh, it feels good. That's what the blood fear really kicks up a notch. It's hitting those, those big <laughs> 58, those big hits where it's like, sometimes in phase two, I just don't eat. Sometimes I eat five food. It's pretty random. I do it in duo, but I don't consistently get kills. And we've already got a pickaxe now from KQ. Which is the thing we want the most, I guess, from her, realistically, for the group. But, um, yeah, I just, I mean, I'm here for the head. I'd love another pickaxe for the group. They would love it. The boys love pickaxes. So, get them some some fun to play with. Okay, clean. And what do we get? We get weapon poison. All right, move it on. It's me and the boy slapping the bug. 2.41 a.m. Bug slapping at night. Afternoon delight. Yeah. Afternoon delight. Uh, uh. 
Ooh, another, another pair of KBD heads. Look at that. I've got so much black head. I can't stop. More KBD heads. Ooh, a dragon pickaxe. Oh, my God. Finally. I'm gonna give this to little Zen boy. I have a uh, Dust Devil task in the Catacombs of Karend as my 50th task for doing, um, you know, Slayer from Konar to get an extra big bonus. So, something then we have that for would be really useful with the Venator bow. Currently still at three out of five charges for uh, making it. So we're heading back to Muspa to see if I can at least get one. Our current KC is at 236 still no shard at a one in a hundred rate so oh just as i say that and i go back to one kill we got our venator shard can you believe that oh my god oh my god we're four out of five it's happening it's actually happening we get the back to back I cannot. Okay. It was like a really fast kill. It's kind of whipping at the last phase, but it felt pretty fast. That could have been a three minute kill. Uh, 322. Yeah, felt fast. I'm taking a, a baby break from doing my Muspa kills. A new update just hit. Apologies, I'm sick, by the way, if you hear my voice. A new update just hit that actually is kind of funny. It's a, a rat boss. It's a mid to low level boss, so it's not going to be something we're like, you know super doing but it has um, a couple drops really it's just a pet and then something else uh scurious scur here it is the pet and then the spine which is used to make rat weapons the boss doesn't really have any drops we care about for like the series so it's not like it's a big deal but it's gonna try to melee it and uh i think we're praying melee and then it, at some point it swaps to different types of stuff climb through i assume is the actual boss fight Climb through private, climb through normal. I've heard he's quite easy to kill, and there's, we're just going to challenge the shit out of him. I'm watching the floor um, for a movement, I guess. He's running around to get cheese and stuff. That's magic, I assume. Yep, magic hit. Blue is magic, green is probably... Uh, that's probably range, yeah. There's rats I gotta kill. Um... I think I just one-shot them pretty much. This isn't a whole lot going on here. There's more mage. She has like three different rats built in. Am I supposed to eat his food to stop him? No, it just seems like it happens. Boss fight's very easy. It's designed to be a, a low-level content boss. Uh, there's falling stuff. I see that. I feel like ignoring the ads might be better. It's good mechanical knowledge for like a low-level player, though. Um... But yeah, so if he drops the spine, that's the main drop we'd want. Drops nothing. Lobsters. But um, the spine is used to make rat weapons, which are only really used in this fight. And they're kind of best in slot because it lets you one tick the ads. But yeah, we'll kill him a couple times and at least until we get a rat weapon and then we'll uh, see what's up there. Oh, he's back. All right. Well, definitely ignoring the rats was the play. He does like no damage, so... That's definitely the uh, way to go, I think, there. Really, you can click on these food piles uh, between kills to heal yourself back to full on a 10-minute timer, which is kind of cool. I will say the music for this place, uh, Oh Rats, is quite the banger. It's uh, definitely worth having on while killing the big rat boy. I could just put him on auto, by the way. Auto attack and just not even change prayers, and I can kill him no problem. So, Oh, look, a trout. A singular trout. I will hide that. Cool. Oh, there it is, the spine. I'm free. Free from the pain. All right, so I gotta take a rune mace and then combine this with the scariest spine. Use spine on anvil. There we go. All right, bone mace, the rat killer. This thing is now faster and has an increased max hit of 10. It's only used for killing killing rats, so that's its uh, that's it. So I'll just be a rat. We'll go do a couple more rat kills, and then we'll pretty much call it there. But I could also turn the spine into a bone short bow or 
a staff, but I don't think I'm going to do either. This thing's basically as good as my whip was, but it one ticks the rat spawns. So here are the rat spawns, so watch if they gather up. So you can go boom, boom, just one tick them like skulls on uh, raids pretty much. Which is kind of cool, I guess. I don't think it makes more sense to not kill the rats until the end of the fight, because then he doesn't summon more rats, so you just like ignore them. And then at the very end of the fight, right here, that's where I go on a, a rat stomping spree, you know? Just because they're all one ticked. Alright, 20 kill count. I think I'm uh, good there for all my rat killing for the day, but uh, yeah. New boss, cool for mid, mid level. Really, it's just like low level learning. So, like, if you're a noob at PVM. A lot of good mechanics to learn in this fight. Um, I can just circumvent them with better gear, but yeah, Rat King, good times. All right, back to Moose by Go. Now that we're done with the rat, at 285 KC. I uh, still only have one shard, so hopefully by the time I get to 300, we get our final shard. It'll be very convenient, but. Uh, as a group, we're still a little dry, but me personally, I'm quite dry, so. So after just completing my 300th Phantom Muspa, I log on the next day, ready to hit the grindstone once again, just to get my second shard being our final shard, when I get a lovely message in Discord from our beautiful member, Pim, who uh, put this on screen. <laughs> says I don't have to kill the slug anymore. <clears throat> which is great because we're now done with Venator Shards. So he has gotten um, three shards in. I can actually check his kill count. Uh, suck peen. He's gotten three in 287, and I've gotten one in 300. So we have actually got to about 600 something on average for five shards. We got unlucky as a total, and yet again, I've gotten Milk as an individual, which is. Seems to be kind of thematic, but I did just get that um, dragon pickaxe, which was nice. Most importantly, we can make the Venator bow now. So let me show you what that is, because that's something I've been wanting since it came out, since I'm our Slayer boy. That's what I mostly do, and it's very, very, very good for Slayer. So there's our five Venator shards in all their glory. Now, you can combine these shards um, with a large amount of Ancient Essence to make the Venator bow. The Venator bow is a very fancy bow. Combine. Non-revertible. Yes, make the bow. Oh my god, there it is. Uncharged. Okay, charge it up. Uh, 50k. Oh, I don't give a shit. And there it is. Now it has a very cool animation, by the way, which is unique to the bow. It has this shit your pants walk. It's one of two items that has a specifically held animation like this that are like kind of exclusive to the item. So the Venator bow is one, and the other being the Dragon uh, Hunter Lance. So when you're running, you hold it like... In your two hands like that and the venator bow you you run and you hold it in your two hands like this so it's very very funny now what does it do how does it shoot is it special what's the whole deal okay so that's the interesting part so the venator bow again it is a bow right so it requires ammunition um you can use amethyst arrows are good i'm just gonna use rune arrows because i have literally like ten thousand rune arrows and they're pretty damn good um the whole thing about the Venator Bow is its uh, its special effect, which is its passive effect. And what that does is it makes its shots chain to two nearby targets. So it has built-in chain, which is the whole the whole hullabaloo with the bow. Um, that's what makes it so desirable. That's what makes it so cool. That's why everyone wants the Venator Bow. And it, it allows you to do a lot of funky things, a lot of interesting boss fights also because of that. So, yeah, it's just got this really cool chaining property that we're going to show off in a second here. I'm going to put on my uh, best range gear that has prayer because I also will be praying at the uh, Dust Devils, which is where I'm using it. Apologies again for my voice. It is fading. This is going to make a lot of tasks, like super chill. So, Dagonauts, Abys Abyssal Demons, um, to name a few. It's used in a lot of boss fights also. You use that Whisperer. It's quite useful. You can use it at um, Grotesque Guardians. It's super, super good there. So there's like no shortage of good places to use it. All right, so here's Dust Devils. So I got my Protect, uh, is it range, I think, maybe? And you can see the shots, and there they go bouncing. 
Look at that. You see the shots bouncing around? I'll protect melee, not range. So you can pretty much just stand in the middle here, and the arrows will just keep bouncing from target to target. And this is a great way for me to train range. <clears throat> because I don't, you know, have 99 range. I've got 95. Um, so using this, I could do that. If I mute sound effects, I don't have to listen to the fucking Vanderbilt sound, which is even better. Uh, so I just can sit here and pretty much AFK and, and loot whenever I want to, as the shots will automatically bounce to nearby targets. So it's like a, a way of, like, you know, keeping aggro on targets that I don't have to really pay attention for. So I can, like... Just kind of tab out, and then I listen to the sound of, like, my um, prayer dropping or my, you know, or a superior spawning. And then just every now and again, I click back in and click on the fire runs. So each shot does damage, and the, the subsequent shots are, I think, 33%, or 66, and then 33% less of the main shot. So they do less damage, but they all roll defense independently. So, yeah, it's, it's really cool, bow. It's used for this sort of activity. I've worn it forever. Now I have it, and I can continue my life doing Slayer.